Before Alan Moore and Graham Morrison, there was Austin Osman Spear, the grandfather of chaos magic. Austin Osman Spear was an artist, philosopher, and an occult magician, like Aleister Crowley, with whom he had a brief association. He was a genius in his own time, unappreciated and vilified by a society that could little understand him. Austin Osman Spear was born on the 30th of December of 1886. He was born of humble roots, the middle child and only son of five children. His father was a policeman who often worked the night shift. Money was short for the Spear family, but when he was young, he began to show an unusual propensity for drawing and art. They managed to find enough funds to send him to art school. At the age of seven, somewhat alienated and oppressed by the females of his family, his mother and four sisters, Spur was befriended by a mysterious old woman and sorcerer by the name of Mrs. Patterson. Spur would often refer to her as his second mother, his witch mother. She taught Spur how to visualize and evoke spirits and elements to reify his dream imagery. She also initiated Spur into witchcraft during a Sabbath meeting where he was given the craft name Sauce. Miss Patterson greatly influenced John Spur. It was said that she could change her appearance from an old woman to that of a young temptress at will as well as other unusual powers. A portrait drawing Spur drew of her at the time is reputed to change before the eyes of those who look upon it. Spur left school at age 13 to serve as an apprenticeship in the stained glass works. During the evenings, he continued his education at the Art College in Lambert, South London. This led to a scholarship at the Royal College of Art, where he began to study in earnest. In 1904, at the age of 17 years, Spear exhibited his first pictures at the Royal Academy. His pictures caused a storm and excelled his popularity in the art world. He then published his first book in 1905, entitled Earth Inferno. This was a book of drawings depicting human figures in grotesque postures and some on semi-human spirit forms he was able to visualize. It also included commentaries that show his insight into the workings of the human mind and his spiritual learnings. In 1908, Spur opened an exhibition at the Bruton Gallery in London where his drawings and paintings soon became popular among the London smart set the intellectuals, art collectors, and dandies of his time. He also came to the attention of Aleister Crowley, who commissioned Spur to create drawings for his magazine, The Equinox. This led Spur into joining Crowley's Argentum Astrum, an occult society known as the Order of the Silver Star in 1910. His association with Crowley didn't last long though, for Spur, had begun work in his best known book, The Book of Pleasure, and was beginning to form his own ideas concerning the practice of magic. The Book of Pleasure is considered one of the most important work as well as drawings. It includes detailed instructions on his system of civilization and the well-known death postures. He has much to say about human hypocrisy, religion, and the meaning of true personal freedom and power. Spur joined the army in 1916 and served as an official war artist during the First World War. He was posted to Egypt where the animal-headed gods and magical religions of ancient Egypt appealed to his insightful nature as an artist and mystic. During the Second War, while working at home in London, his home was hit and devastated by a blitz bomb blast. Spur was injured and left paralyzed down his right side. Many believe he would never draw again. 
but within six months he had regained the use of his right arm and soon taught himself to draw one more. Many credit the speed of his recovery to his personal elementals and familiars. In 1921, Spur published his book The Focus of Life, another book of drawings containing his unique magical commentaries. Here he mentions the word chaos. In relation to the normality of chaos as a natural order of things and in the self. The more chaotic, the more complete I am, he says. He philosophizes and speaks of existence, sex, ecstasy, and sensations, also about self love, belief, and the chaos of the normal. By 1924, Spear was the height of his artistic success, but his success as an artist began to conflict with the philosophers within. He became disenchanted with his trendy yet sad friends and benefactors with whom he had become so popular. He excommunicated himself by writing another book entitled The Anathema of Souls and flaunted their hypocrisies in their faces. He returned to South London where he lived in relative obscurity as a recluse. Little is known of his activities during the time except that he lived in a small basement flat caring little for money or fame. He made a small living drawings portraits of common people in local pubs and selling them for a small amount of money. While he wasn't publishing during this time, he continued to write and develop his philosophy, art and magic. In 1947, Spare met with Kenneth Grant and gradually became more involved with other occultists of the time. He met Gerald Garner in the early 1950s who engaged him to create sigils, magic, talismans and other rituals aids. At the same time, he began work on definite grimoire called the Saskia Cultus. This was to contain the accumulation of his magical secrets. Austin Osman Spur died in May of 1956, his work on the grimoire unfinished. In his later years, Spur became obsessed with sex magic and immersed himself in the worship of Isis and other Egyptian deities. He then integrated this into his practice of witchcraft, as reflected in his artwork of cultural themes. His obsession with sex magic turned him to many perverse sexual activities that the society of his time could not understand. He believed that sexually repulsive acts cause certain chemical changes within the body, thus transforming the magical consciousness. Little could he have realized the impact his work would have on the future generations of witches and magicians. He was the inspiration that led to the information of the Illuminatus of Tanateros IoT in England in the late 70s and the practice of what we know now as chaos magic. In the late 1970s, some 20 years after the death of the great Austin Osman Spur, Mr. Carroll and Mr. Sherwin formed the Illuminatis of Stanateros, IoT, a new tradition that became synonymous with chaos magic. Chaos magic is based primarily on the working and philosophy of Austin Osman Spur. It would seem to me that chaos magic is not exactly witchcraft. While it incorporates witchcraft, is the cutting edge of high magic and is more into the realms of magicians than of a wish. This is a magical philosophy that transcends traditions and dogma. It is a journey toward results rather than hierarchical megalomania. It is a useful and effective to the individual as it is for a group and infinitely adaptable to the needs of the many or the few. Any and all methods are allowed and encouraged. The only requirement is that it works. Chaos magic is the cutting edge of modern magicians. It is on the minds and lips of magic users of all descriptions and in many parts of the world. As we learn more and more about the nature of magic and reality. We are beginning 
to realize that behind all forms of magic are the natural laws of chaos. The main concepts of chaos magic, we own them to this great artist and magician, Austin Osman Spear. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you like it, and remember, do what you will is the whole of the law. Please take care, subscribe, and keep watching, more to come. Thanks, and bye.